Welcome back to the Publishing Push channel. We use this channel to give advice, tips and tools to help you become a better author and to have more success in your writing career. Not too long ago, we did a video entitled Six Words to Remove from Your Novel. This got a great response, both good and bad. And one of the things I wanna clear up in this video right at the start is we're not saying to never ever use the words that we mention. Sometimes you will have to use those words. It's all about the context. What we're saying is here are ways to improve your writing, get more effect from your writing, have a bigger impact on the reader, which is ultimately going to mean that they enjoy the book more and, of course, they recommend the book more, you sell more of the book, so it's all for the benefit of the writing. In this video, we have seven words, so we up the ante this time around, seven words to remove or to try and replace in your manuscript. Before we get into the video, please do like the video if you enjoy this. It really helps more people to see this video. If you subscribe, make sure to turn the notification bell on. If that's not on, then you won't get notified when we release new videos. And as always, comment below with your thoughts and if there are any other topics that you would like us to cover in these videos. The first word that I'm going to discuss today is went. So uh, it is regarded as a lazy word and I'm going to give you some examples as to why it's considered a lazy word. As an example, she went to church. Okay, she went there, that's acceptable, that tells the reader what's happened, but to make it more exciting, you could say she drove to the church, she ran to the church, she walked slowly to the church, use that opportunity to tell us more about how that particular character is approaching the scene or what's coming next. It gives us more insight into how they are feeling. Another example is that he went to football practice or for our friends across the pond, he went to soccer practice. So what you could do with this instead is of course he ran to football practice. You know, he couldn't wait to get there. He was so excited. It shows his passion for football practice. So there is another example. The next word is honestly. So this is a word that you should remove immediately. I know I said at the start of this video that it was all about context. This word in particular is one that I think can usually be removed. So this word is of course often used where we say, the character said this such and such honestly. And the problem with the word honestly is when it is used in that context, it often detracts from that statement being honest. And you'll see this used in person. If someone is trying to convince you, they might say, honestly, yes, honestly, I did that. And the more they try and convince you, the less you start to believe it. So this word is a good example of that. And in your writing, it's actually going to detract from the impact of an honest statement because people will sit there and wonder, well, why did they have to clarify it? It was honest, you know, is it not honest? And it just has that effect, unfortunately. The other major problem and implication with this word is when you use honestly to make an honest statement, and then perhaps you make another honest statement, but you don't use the word honestly, if you're still with me, then well done. <laughs> what that will mean is people then become confused. You know, it was that statement where they didn't use honestly, was that an honest statement? So it can lead to confusion, which is why my personal opinion is it's better off avoided in your writing. The next words are absolutely and totally. So these words are nine times out of 10 redundant. Of course, there will be examples where they'll be relevant, but nine times out of 10, you don't need these words. For example, making something absolutely important or totally important, it, it was already important. So there's a, a you know an example where these words just don't add anything. You know, if you said, oh, that soccer practice that he's running for is absolutely important, absolutely just doesn't add anything again in that sentence. It just needs to be important. 
not the best example, but that gives you, you know, the main point that we're driving at. So those are the first four words and we have another three to go. Do remember to like the video if you're enjoying this. Comment below with your thoughts on these words or any words that you personally try and remove or limit the use of. And of course, subscribe, click that notification bell. We've got some amazing videos coming your way. Just is another word that is a filler word nine times out of 10. Again, as I've said before, there will be circumstances where it is used, but we see this so often in the manuscripts that we review before we accept the submissions, where the word just is constantly used and it's just a filler word. <laughs> you know, it is that, it is simply a filler word. When you're using it, of course, to say if something is fair and just, well, you know, that has a very clear usage and a clear need to use that term, but often it will just be used to fill sentence. The final two words are start and begin. And I'm guilty of this myself. As you saw in the last clip, you know, I even used just in that example as a filler word whilst talking. So it's so easily done. And that's the point of these videos is we're not saying that everyone should write perfectly and that you should never use any of these. The point is just to try and be aware of them and eliminate them where you can, where they're really not serving the manuscript and pushing your writing forward. So start and begin, you know, a good example is the boy started to cry. You could say the boy began to cry, uh, or even better would be the boy cried is another example. And to push it even further, you could say tears welled up in the boy's eyes, you know, so it's just getting a bit more interesting, exciting, you know, challenging how good your descriptions are to really describe what is going on in the scene. Thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed these seven words that should be limited in terms of their use or restricted. And another exciting announcement is that we are running a digital workshop for authors. It's all about book marketing. There is a link in the video description, so make sure to go and have a look at that. Over the course of two days, we will be covering major book marketing topics, all the tools, tips, and resources you need to go ahead and launch your book successfully or to resurrect a book that you have already published where perhaps the sales aren't doing too well. We look forward to seeing you in the next video.